This is Snake Island, a remote and nearly uninhabited rock in the northwest corner of the Black Sea. In February 2022, this little-known place made international headlines after it was one of the first stops of the Russian Navy as Vladimir Putin began his invasion of Ukraine. However, the island didn't catch the world's attention for its strategic importance, but because of the reply of the 13 Ukrainian border guards when given the ultimatum to surrender or be obliterated by the flagship of the Russian fleet. The defiant and kinda filthy reply became a rallying cry in Ukraine and around the world. But what most people and perhaps even the defenders themselves were unaware of is the ancient and amazing history of this tiny outpost. For centuries, Snake Island was a place of pilgrimage and veneration as the home and burial place of the greatest soldier in all of Greek mythology, the legendary warrior Achilles. Achilles was of course the mythic figure from Homer's Iliad. And yeah, the thing we need to cover is how does a mythological person from 3,000 years ago have a tomb? Well, the short answer is he doesn't. But what we're talking about with Snake Island is the very real cult of Achilles that lasted from roughly the 6th century BC to the 3rd century AD, and the temples, rituals, and offerings that went along with it. But while we're here, let's take a second to look at the historiosity of Achilles and the Trojan War. According to Homer, Achilles fought for the Greeks during their spat with Troy. He was the greatest warrior of the time, but with a major weakness when it came to arrows in the heel. Mm. Since the start of the modern study of Greek mythology, Achilles and really the entire Trojan War was thought by many scholars to be a completely fictional tale. Until 1873, when the early archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann found Troy. Sort of. <laughs> Known today as a Sarlik, what Schliemann discovered was a site in the correct location that had been home to many large and prosperous settlements spanning thousands of years. It had also been attacked and burned multiple times in its history, with the remains of marble and pottery showing the city's wealth and importance, as did the incredibly valuable and incredibly controversial gold treasure Schliemann claimed to have found at his Sarlik that may or may not have been real. The point, though, is that the site showed that at the very least, Troy could have been historical, and was almost certainly based on actual wars from antiquity. So, historians have concluded if Troy could have been real, Achilles could have been too. Although it's extremely unlikely a single person went by that name and did all the things that he did, the consensus today is that he was probably a combination of numerous warriors throughout Greek history. But this is all just a bit of fun historical hypothesizing. Real or not, the bigger question is, how did one of the greatest figures from Greek history end up in Ukraine? Brevit. Today, no part of Greece touches the Black Sea, with the entire region having either a very Slavic or Turkish vibe. And yes, the Romanians are there as well, who are kind of their own thing, but the point is you don't really think about the Greeks when talking about this part of the world. But 2.5 millennia ago, you absolutely did. Beginning in the 7th century BC, the Greek city-states began colonizing the Black Sea, having settled nearly every part of the coast over the next 200 years. This would lead to an entire culture known as Pontic Greeks, after the Pontus region of Anatolia, who would rule parts of northern modern Turkey and Crimea until as late as 1461 and the fall of the Trebizond Empire. So clearly, Greek culture permeated the shores of the Black Sea for centuries. And maybe the best example of this is found in the myth of Jason and the Argonauts, whose quest to find the Golden Fleece brought them to what was then called Colchis, but today called Georgia. Jason, just like Achilles, was from Thessaly in Greece, but made his name fighting giants and warriors, including the all-female Amazons, along these shores. So while there are no specific mentions of Snake Island until later in history, it's obvious there were many broad connections between Greek mythology, Achilles' hometown, warriors in general, and the Black Sea. The earliest records of a cult to Achilles located on Snake Island actually come from historians in the Roman period. The most notable of these was Pliny the Elder, who in the first century AD described the island of Achilles famous for the tomb of that man. It was said that after the fall of Troy, Achilles' mother gathered his bones from the funeral pyre and brought them to the island. And although there are numerous versions of the story, the general idea is that before his death, Achilles used Snake Island as almost a fortress of solitude, retiring there with his Myrmidon warrior. 
Pliny also mentions the race course of Achilles as the traditional spot where Achilles and his men would race and exercise their horses. Pliny describes it as a narrow peninsula in the shape of a sword 125 Roman miles from the island, which today is almost exactly the distance to the very sword-like tendra split off the coast of Ukraine. In the 2nd century Periplus, or Guidebook of the Black Sea by the historian Arian of Nicomedia, there is an entry for Snake Island, explaining what visitors who journey there should expect. It is said that the goddess Thetis raised this island from the sea for her son Achilles who dwells there. Here is his temple and his statue. In this temple are also deposited a great many holy gifts, craters, rings, and precious stones. Although these descriptions are from a later period, more modern archaeology has discovered Greek pottery, clearly used as a part of ritual and offerings from as early as the 5th century BC. 19th century scholars also discovered what appeared to be a 30 by 30 meter temple that was unfortunately completely destroyed when the Russian Navy decided to build a lighthouse on the spot in 1823. <laughs> However, today, few if any ancient remains can be found. Even before the Russian invasion of 2022, any archaeological research on the island was basically impossible. For much of the last 200 years, and especially since the fall of the Soviet Union, Snake Island's location has made it extremely sensitive politically and militarily. Militarily. The only inhabitants were the soldiers and their families, only stationed there to protect the territorial claims that came along with maintaining a settlement. But perhaps that same sense of foreboding and loneliness one gets when looking at this solitary rock can help explain why it was chosen as the mythological site of Achilles' tomb. No, he probably didn't exist, and if he did, it would have been four to six hundred years before the Greeks came to the Black Sea anyway. But once they did arrive, it's easy to see how they made the connection between the jagged, barren cliffs and the grizzled image we still have today of the greatest warrior that ever lived. And maybe there's something to the legend. The Greeks sometimes called it the Island of Heroes, a place that could imbue one with the strength and courage of Achilles. And in a way, that's exactly what it's become for the Ukrainian people. Please take a second to hit the like button and leave me a comment below. Do you think this is where Achilles was buried? Do you think he really existed? Probably not. Who knows? Thanks so much for watching.